I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here at the Sophia M. Sachs Butterfly House at Chesterfield, Missouri. I'm here to do interviews on various pollinators, and I hope you enjoy. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Chris. Hello. Hello. So what can you tell us about this butterfly house? So this butterfly house has been here since 1998, and we house about 2,000 free-flying butterflies throughout the year. February through December, we're only closed in January. So even in the middle of winter here, with snow on the ground outside, you can be surrounded by 2,000 flying tropical butterflies. So what kind of butterflies do you have here? All of the butterflies that we have here have come from Central America, South America, Asia, and Africa. We don't have any North American native butterflies here. That said, we have about 70 to 100 different species that we get throughout the year. That's a lot. It is a lot. We get them from butterfly farms whose very job it is to actually raise the caterpillars and tell them to make a chrysalis. Then they put those chrysalids in big shipping containers and send them to us. We receive them in the chrysalis stage, open them up, and when they emerge as butterflies, let them out to fly here. So how do you feed all these butterflies? The feeding is mainly done not by us, but by the flowers. Butterflies are nectar feeders. So we have to grow substantial amounts of flowers. That's why all the natural life that's built in here is important to let the plants grow. But we do put out some trays of cut fruit that are very important for certain butterflies like the blue warpo that don't drink flower and they need the fruit. What is your favorite species of butterfly here? A very popular one is the blue morpho butterfly. It's got about a five inch wingspan. It's bright blue on one side and camouflage brown on the other side. They fly around pretty much constantly putting on a great show. So do the butterflies reproduce anyway? Actually, they don't, and many people may not realize it, but butterflies need particular food plants. Monarch butterflies needing milkweed is a well-known example, and if they don't have milkweed, they just won't lay any eggs. We're not letting our butterflies reproduce in here because we're not growing those plants they need for their caterpillars. It's actually very simple. They can't find the right plant, they don't lay any eggs. So we rely on getting new shipments every single week to keep our population as high as we do. We get on average about seven to 800 individual chrysalids every single week from our butterfly farms. That's a lot of butterflies. It certainly is. But butterflies only live for about two to three weeks once they emerge from their chrysalis. They have a very short lifespan. That's not long at all. It's not long at all. And with that kind of fast mortality, just from old age, if we want to keep the number of butterflies in here high, we do have to get a lot more shipped in. So what conservation efforts are being taken to help protect these butterflies? Actually, the Butterfly House is pleased to partner with the butterfly farms that we've been talking about because they are on-the-ground conservation efforts that are really doing great work to conserve the native rainforests of Costa Rica, Malaysia, and the other countries we work with. Every dollar that we give them to buy chrysalis they are turning around and using to buy land, which they're increasing the size of their preserves with. They are providing the people who live there in these countries with sustainable jobs. They can feed their families and not involve them in slash and burn agriculture or other destructive practices. So how do you fund this part of White House? Through various ways. I mean, addition, so the ticket price that our guests pay is one of the most crucial ways to funding us. We very much respect and rely on all of our visitors, as well as the members of the Missouri Botanical Garden, which the Butterfly House belongs to, the Missouri Botanical Garden. All of that basic admission fee goes a long way to supporting what we do. So everyone who buys a ticket has supported our buying of new butterflies. And by supporting our buying new butterflies, they have directly supported a thriving and effective conservation organization, the Butterfly Farms. And we like to tell people that. Like sometimes they're not even knowing. Yes, exactly. People bring their families or out of town guests here just to see the Butterfly House, and they didn't even realize that they were giving money to support that. We like to get that message out. I didn't even know that until you told me this. Yeah, we also have education programs. Teachers can bring their school here on a field trip. We also go to their classrooms. And we do all sorts of other classes for adults, 
youths, family, teens throughout the year. So how do the water features benefit the butterflies? That's actually more important than most people might realize because the water fills the air with water vapor, which increases the humidity in the air. And that humidity, because this is a tropical environment, that humidity is super important to keeping the plants and the butterflies as happy as they need to be. So let's go take a look at how you take care of the chrysalis. Sounds good. So how do you guys take care of the chrysalis? This is our chrysalis emergence case. And it's a very carefully controlled atmosphere that gives the butterfly chrysalids what they need to emerge. When we receive the shipments from the butterfly farms, we take the chrysalids and hang them up on these boards. The boards are color coded to tell you what country they've come from. The yellow means Costa Rica, the red means Malaysia, and so on. So people who are visiting us can tell where these butterflies are native to. When the butterflies do come out of this chrysalis, as you can see on the bottom shelf here, they'll sit in the trays for a period of several hours. They need about five to six hours before their wings are really strong enough to take them anywhere. We'll let them rest in there. Then we put them in a big mesh cage that we can carry around into this flight house, open the door, and release the butterflies out here. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for telling us about all these butterflies in the butterfly house. It's my pleasure. Thank you for talking with me. Absolutely. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel, and also check out my Instagram, at culture. And as always, I'll see you next week.